Hey guys, uh, Mom Vernon Kid here coming to you again. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, welcome back to Characters Why I Like Them Series 3. Series 3 is all about those characters from yesteryears, um, the characters that paved the way for the characters that we have now, paying respect and homage to those characters uh, because I believe it's very important to me to do so. And also, it gets people interested in them. So, we've had the likes of Zoro, the Shadow, the Phantom, the Spirit, Doc Savage. Now, I'm going to give you another character. Now, you may laugh at his name, but when I tell you a little bit more about this character, you may be a little bit intrigued about it. And that is none other than Mr. Jeffro Dumont, aka the Green Llama. Now, it's not in terms of the animal llama, it's supposed to be uh, Buddhism, you know, in terms of the Dalai Lama and things like that. That's what he is. He is a hero who practices Buddhism. And I think that's really cool. Now, I've been following the Green Lama since dynamite uh entertainment uh got hold of him um during the comic superpowers and things like that and then getting more into his backstories before in other before he be, he came to dynamite and things like that and how much they changed the character or how much did it keep the same for the character so let me give you a little bit of the info a um, little bit of who this character is like I said, his real name is uh, Jeffro Dumont, and um, he is, uh, he was, uh, you can say, a, a very wealthy, so you can say his parents were very wealthy, his parents were billionaires, and he went to the best schools in New York City, he's from New York City, um, but he, you know, went to, he went to, uh, went to the great schools like uh, Harvard, where he got his ABA, uh, his uh, he went to Oxford and he got his MA. Let me make sure. Uh, here's my my notes. Uh, yeah, he Oxford got his MA and he got his PhD uh, from uh, Saarburg, uh, which and he also attended a college in Tibet. Now. After before he uh, he inherited the family fortune after his parents were killed, and you got to remember back then, you know, we back then around the 40s, a lot of the heroes, you know, how they became the heroes, most of them, their parents either died or so, and we saw this as as well once again with uh, with Jeffro's uh, parents, and they died in an accident while he was still at Harvard, and. Uh, but later on, he would inherit their their fortune, and that's where he pretty much um, spent a lot of time in. He spent about ten years in in Tibet, basically, where he studied to become a lama. You know, basically a, a Buddhist spiritual teacher. Um, and he also, while he was over, also over there, he um, he learned many mystical secrets. And you got to once again remember, you know, this is 1940s at the time. And <clears throat> at that time, you got to remember, Asia really was like that place of myth and legend where science and and more it was more mystical than science. And the creators, well, I'm, I, I forgot to even tell you who the creator is, the creator, uh, Maka Rabo, I believe that's his name, uh, Raboy, um, he, when he created the characters, you know, that's pretty much the way they, you know, they looked at it, but, uh, when he returned back home, uh, when he returned back to America, he, he, in, his intentions was to spread his knowledge of what he learned in Tibet, so, you know, all the you know the basics you know the basic uh, doctrines of Tibetan Buddhism you know for example you remove ignorance and uh, 
and relief relieve suffering and things like that um, but it's kind of funny because he realized that he can accomplish more by <laughs> fighting crime uh, so uh, he that's what he did uh, the thing was which was cool once again showcased that he really was taking his his new teachings very seriously he never carried he never ca he never carried a gun believing and and I quote this these these were his words this would make me no better than those I fight so he um but uh pretty much uh so he never carried a gun so he pretty much uh used his wits and his intelligence and you know the various sciences that he learned um for example which i will get into um an example of that would be the fact that um he he would endow himself with superpowers by scientific knowledge of like radi radioactive salts that's what i'm not even joking about that he and pretty much they would give him in terms of like uh in in terms of the the salts would give him um uh in terms of like uh, f uh what was it super strength agility um super speed and invulnerability and at one point was able to shoot like energy enhanced strikes out of his hand uh and also have the like the ability to control nature um as well as uh, teleportation, enhanced stamina, and he also had the power to uh, to resurrect himself back to life. So if he got shot, he could bring himself back to life. Um, but that was like one big weakness because I remember reading that in uh, Dynamite Superpowers where he did that and it aged him. It, it caused him to age like not ra kind of rapidly um, but uh, like I said because of his mystical and magical knowledge he did have some powers you know like I said levitation and flight were the ones that just were his because of his teachings the others came from the the radioactive salts that he he basically used on himself uh, but He's he's a very interesting character because, like I said, you know what what makes him stand out is the fact that um, there's not a lot of superheroes in the game that are uh, that practice Buddhism, and he does, and he he practices it to a T to the fact that he actually um, created another alter ego for himself. Um, he created. Uh, he created two alter egos. Of course, Dumont, uh, Jeffro had the Green Lama, which he fought crime with, and then he had uh, the Buddhist priest, Doctor uh, Pali, was like, uh, and that was like his alter ego. And then I remember also he created another uh, alter ego uh, that like uh, he used when he was on his adventures called uh, Hugh Gilmore. I remember. Yeah, there we go, Hugh Gilmore. But uh, he's been around, like I said, since the the nineteen excuse me, I believe that like the nineteen twenties. Um, a lot of pulp stories were made about him, and um, but in terms of the comic wise, he's uh, been pretty much all over. You know, he's been. He's been with a lot of uh, small publications, uh, indie publications like uh, Cornerstone uh, Publications. He was with. Uh, he's been with uh, Moonstone. He's been with Moonstone. He's been with uh, uh, Alter Press. He's and he's uh, also been with, uh, of course. The Golden Age stuff, Prize Comics was putting out his stuff then, but now he is uh, 
he is with uh, he's with Dynamite now. Dynamite has them once again. Like I said, you know, Dynamite is where it is, where it's at to find these pulp era characters, and uh, that's where he's been ever since. And we've seen him in various Dynamite uh, series from. Uh, of course, the the very highly recommended and highly uh, highly praised uh, series uh, mini series called The Mass, where he teams up with the likes of Zoro, the Spider, uh, Green Green Hornet, and Kato, uh, the Shadow, people like that, uh, uh, the Black Spectre, uh, Ms. Fury. They teamed. He was in that, and now you can also find him in the comic. The dynamite comic called uh, Action, which is which is is like a it takes place during the Cold War. Uh, so he's he's still been he's around he's very much around. It's not like he's he's just disappeared or he's just just faded into uh, obscurity, but uh, he is definitely around and it's it's pretty good. It's, it's it makes me happy to know that. Um, characters like this are still around and they are interesting the young bloods now people who who are maybe never seen this guy you know especially because these these guys were around when our grandparents were children but you know they're around now and they're people are getting interested about the characters um, but like I said I off the top of my head guys I can't think of any hero today that practices Buddhism and um, besides the Green Lama I can't think of it if anybody else can name me um, now have we seen him outside and now you think you think well this guy has been around since the, the 20s the 40s uh, has there ever been like any series radio shows about him um, or movies I don't believe so I don't think there's been any um, movies about him but I'm not sure this I wouldn't say I'm not sure that the character couldn't get over it's just um, it's just for me it's to the point of would he be plausible to do on the big screen and, and would you keep it would you modernize him or would you keep him in the era that he was famous in keep it the period period piece um, because sometimes, like I said, once again, I've been saying with this series, like a lot of these pulp era heroes, I feel that if they're going to do movies about them or series about them, keep them in that era that they were popular and that they really gain notoriety and things like that. For example, Shadow, stay, keep him in the 30s. Um, that's why no matter what, I loved how they did the first movie. They kept it in the 30s, the 20s, the, that that era, you know, don't bring him in the, the present, even though Dynamite did have a, a series, they just recently finished a, a mini series called Shadow Now, where we it is the shadow in the modern era, and he doesn't look any different than he is now because of he finally mastered his teachings, and he has literally found the secret of youth, and he's fighting his, uh, his greatest foe, his arch nemesis, um, Shi Wu Khan, who is a descendant of Genghis Khan, uh, but uh, with the Green Lama, you know, I would I would love to see them try something, maybe live action. Um, but then, the my biggest fear is the fact that this he'll be taken as a joke, which I don't want him to. Um, so. Uh, but other than that, guys, that's a little bit that you sh should know about the Green Llama. Um, if you, I hope this guy's uh, interest you or you got your little info on the character. And if you want to research the character more, be my guest. Uh, it's always good for me to uh, introduce people to new characters. It, it, whether they are lesser known or very popular. And that's what this series is about. These are characters that I like and I want to showcase them to you. Just even if it's just for five minutes or so. 
But other than that, guys, uh, you guys take care. I'll see you guys next time on characters, why I like them. This is series three. And I will see you guys next week with another episode. Uh, perhaps we will keep it in the color green. I give you a hint. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, next week, I'll give you the green hornet. How's about that, guys? I'll tell you and give you my reasons why I like the green hornet. I'll probably throw Kato in there too. Definitely got to throw Kato in there. So it's a Green Hornet and Kato for next week's edition of Characters Why I Liked Them. See you guys next time.